Hi, I've been using the official Twitter app because I think it's the best Twitter app there is. And uh, I have also been using Tweetbot and uh, Twitterific a lot, but uh, the official Twitter app has always been the best app available with all the features I need and so on. But now Tweetbot has released an updated app for iPad 2, the Tweetbot 4. So the new Tweetbot 4 is now updated for both the iPhone and iPad, finally. And uh, you have to buy it again, so that's not so fun though. But uh, I think uh, Tweetbot 4 is worth the money, actually, because it has a lot of new cool features that it hasn't had before, and it looks really cool now and so on. For example, the new timeline stream. You have the new activity stream at the right of your timeline now. That's pretty nifty. So you see everyone that retweets your tweets and favorite your tweets and follows you and so on directly in the timeline stream. So I like that a lot. But I have preferred to have the activity column at the left side instead because I scroll my uh, stream with the right thumb and now I have to use the left thumb to do that. That's a bit annoying though but maybe I get used to it. Another new cool feature in the Tweetbot 4 is the stats feed. Here you can see statistics on how good your tweets are going. For example here I have today I have eight activities three favorites and three new followers and then you can see all the activity on your tweets and so on here that's pretty nifty but i'm still missing the real statistics from the twitter official app where you can see how many has watched your tweet and so on and clicked on the links and all that but maybe the official Twitter app is the only app that is available to have that and uh, all other apps can't have that feature. But the timeline is at the top as you can see and then you have your mentions, direct messages and the activity stream with your stats and so on. And here you have the search feature and here you have your favorites and here is your profile and the profile you have all your tweets and so on as usual and here we have the lists so if you have a lot of Twitter lists you can see them here and here we have the mute filters and I really love the mute filters because you can add keywords, hashtags, users and so on to the mute filters. You can filter your timeline streams. So for example, I have added the keyword Android and choose to have it forever muted. So I don't see any tweets about Android. I really like that. So you can filter the stream to have only the content you want to have so you can see only the content you want to see in your Twitter stream. I like that a lot. So for example, if I want to mute this, uh, I can mute it on, uh, for example, the keyword Afghanistan. Then I go to my mute and add a keyword. Uh, Af and stand as you can see there and i can choose uh, mention should be muted searches should be muted and list should be muted and i can also choose the duration forever one day one week one month and forever and so on so and here you can see how many tweets in your stream at the moment that matches the keyword one of 451. So if I click save here and go back to my timeline, then 
I have muted all the tweets about Afghanistan. That pretty nifty. And you can also go into settings, of course. And as you can see, by the way, this, the timeline is uh, updating automatically. It streams uh, automatically all the tweets, but it only do that on Wi-Fi, not on mobile data. Too bad, because I have a lot of mobile data, so I would like to have it updated automatically also on mobile data, but it doesn't. But in the settings, we can see all the accounts, the Twitter accounts you have, and you can also go into settings here. And sounds, play all, yeah, then Tweetbot plays all the sounds that you want to hear. And in the display settings, you can choose font, for example, San Francisco, the new font for iOS 9. And here you can uh, have the text size. You can set the text size here. And you can choose to have a full name, username, or both displayed on all the tweets. Image thumbnails, set that size if you want. And avatars, you can have round avatars or squared avatars. And you can show badges, of course. You can turn them off so you don't see avatars. And you can have the relative date format instead of absolute. And uh, you can have a uh, switch automatically feature to on. So it will switch to dark mode when it's dark enough. You can set that here. So for example, if I drag this here, as you can see, now it turns dark. So if I set it down below here, it will only turn dark when it's below that limit. And we have the streaming features, as I said, I have it to on and that it should pin to top. And the pin to top setting means that it always scrolls to the top when updating instead of just updating with new tweets, but you have to scroll manually. So I like to have it to pin to top because that means that I can see all the new tweets all the time without doing anything. The quote format you can set. I have the standard quote from the official Twitter. You can have a copy tweet or RT with comment or via at user if you prefer that. But I prefer the Twitter standard, standard quote. And you have also short right swipe. You can set to have it as retweet or favorite. So if I do a short right swipe, it will retweet the tweet automatically for me. That's pretty nifty. And you can choose the browser here. That's also really, really good in Tweetbot 4. So I can choose to have Safari. I can choose to use one password as my browser. And that's really useful because one password could store all your passwords. You don't need to log into every site that you need to log into. Or you can choose to have Chrome, but I have it set to Safari because I like Safari. And you can also have that tweet links should open in Tweetbot, but using the browser you have set here. So if I click on a link, it opens direct in Tweetbot in Safari. So you don't have to uh, have the link opening switching app for you. So you still are in Tweetbot. Also, that feature is also really, really useful. And here you have all my accounts. And then you can go into account settings. For example, my main account at Swatling. You can set the notifications here. 
and here I have it set to all. It should notify me when anyone is mentioning me and I have direct messages, retweets, quotes, favorites and follows to on so I have the notifications for that. You can choose the URL shortening. I have the Twitter standard here. You can choose Bitly, Cloud App, Droppler, or a custom URL shortening service. Image upload, I have set to Twitter standard. Cloud App, Droppler, Imagely, Mobile Picture, iFrog, or a custom image upload. And the same with video upload. I have it set to Twitter. But you can choose Cloud App, Droppler, Movie Picture, Twitter, iFro, or Custom. A read later service is also available to choose. And I use Pocket, but you can have readability, Pinboard, Instapaper, Bitly, or None. And you can sync your position and everything else using iCloud or another service called tweet market but I prefer iCloud. iCloud is very stable now and very fast so I really like the iCloud Synky. So that was the settings in the new TweetBot 4 and I like it a lot as I said and one of the great feature in TweetBot is that you can long click, long press on a link for example and you get the share sheet. The share sheet menu opens directly and you can do all kinds of stuff by just long press on a link and choose the specific app you want to share to and so on. That's pretty nifty. And here I have the short swipe to the right, as I said, to retweet a tweet. And if I continue to swipe to the right, I can reply and a left swipe, get options. It opens the tweet and here you will see different comments that you have on that tweet or you can choose different um, options here and you can go into view details, view retweet, view in fav store and translate and so on. So that's pretty nifty. So you have a lot of options directly in the stream on a tweet by just long pressing and swiping and so on. So I really like this. And when creating a tweet, you have the options to choose your location and photos and so on. And here you can type your tweet. So uh, it's pretty clean and simple compose window but it's very effective and if you have set your options as you want them you can share images and so on and have the URLs shortened for you automatically with the services you have chosen. So I really like Tweetbot 4. That was all of the features and uh, all the new things in Tweetbot and it's very fast and I can highly recommend buying Tweetbot 4 because I think it's worth the money and um, the only feature I miss if from the Twitter official Twitter app is as I said the statistics from how many how many views and link clicks and so on. Okay so that was my walkthrough of the new Tweetbot 4 for iOS. It's available as a universal app for both iPad and iPhone. And at the moment it's, it's on sale. So go get it now and don't wait because if you wait, it will be a lot more expensive than it is now. Uh, here in Sweden, it costs around 50 Swedish crowns at the moment. And it will cost around 100 Swedish crowns when the sale is ended, so go get it now and don't wait. Okay, bye.